Hey guys, it's Courtney here from SUV Campers and today I want to take you on a tour of the SUV Teletrack. First thing I'm going to do is throw over to our friend Bo is going to show you how easily these camper trailers open. Jeff is going to show you how easily they close. Take it away boys. So grab your winch cable and then overdo your side centre latch, your rear centre latch. Put your winch cable onto your top eyelet, undo your other rear centre latch, then just push down in there, take a little bit of the weight, this centre latch, and then it will just simply pop up. And then you winch it over with the winch cable. Locking your winch into place. On a Grand, it does have a side center locking device if you want to put that on. And then it's a matter of walking around to the back of the camper trailer. On the rear of the camper trailer, there's two safety locking pins that they just come out. Come out. So one on that tire and one on this one. Then there's an over center latch that you undo. And the tires simply fold down. You undo your T-handles on the back of your draw slide. And then your draw simply pulls out. So then we open your door and step into your camper trailer. Then we simply push out this bow here until it clicks into the locking pins. So once you're inside, what you do is put a spreader power on the back of this, and that's your rear wall for your rear bed. Simply attach that there, and then push that tension back in that, and that's your roof truss in. As you can see, all the tents now all erected. The tropical roof has popped up all by itself. The rear bed's out and assembled. The only other thing you need to do is attach the siding to this. So underneath the bed is your side wall and that just simply attaches to this underneath Velcro piece. So you're just attaching your Velcro siding pieces along this side and then your top flap comes over the top to seal it all off. And attach these clips on the side. It's pretty much it. Slide. So first thing you do is untack your Velcro wall. And then put that down underneath the mattress so it doesn't get caught. And now we're off to the inside. So inside the camper trailer packing it up. It's just a matter of letting off your roof truss and pack down your back arm. So once you let the back wall down, then it's just a matter of dropping these sides down. So you just push that up off the pin and let it slide back down. So once you've got the back bed down and the interior piece down, it's a matter of sliding the drawer back in. So just make sure that all your canvas is neatly, is neatly tucked in. So the drawer's going to slide back in and not get caught on anything. And then it's a matter of just sliding the rear drawer in. Locking in your T-handles. Your rear wheel carrier comes up with your over centre latch. And then your safety pins go in with a little R clip so on it. Very important to make sure you've got your door secured and your deadlock in place so the door will not come open and your door is closed. 
Make sure your screen on the front is open inside and out so we can express the air when we close it over. On a grand, undo that locking latch and then we just release the winch cable depending on the wind or how lucky you are and then all we do is just simply push this over and then we start to do our tucking. So initially the more that you can get to push in across that big void in the middle it'll give you a lot more room to pack it up and it'll pack up certainly a lot easier. So the second part of your pack down is just to pull down the lid and express the air out of the inside of it and then we're just attaching the winch cable to the lower eyelet. So now we're at the front of the cable, front of the trailer. So we simply just winch it down and on a grand, I normally stop when it hits those center ribs across the top and that's where I do my tuck in from. Down is wind it down a little bit more until it hits the, on a grand, this front center rib and that's where you do your final tuck in. Once you've tucked that last bit of canvas in, your over centre latch goes up, lever that down and put the over, over back over centre latch on and put the side down and the same on the other side. Undo your winch cable, wind it back up, you're ready to go. So, undo your winch cable off the back eyelet and then simply wind it back onto the spool. Lock it into place. That's all there is to it. Now the reason SUV campers are so quick and so easy to open is because of these double gas struts here. So this assists with the opening and closing of the camper trailer. Alrighty, now the lid of SUV campers actually has a double rubber automotive seal around it. So you can see one seal there and then a second one at the back here. Now the reason we put two seals on is actually as an added method of dust and water protection. So when you're traveling along, the camper's bouncing around, you're four wheel driving, it might be flexing a little bit, one of the seals may lift and this is where the other seal will come into play. So if one of the seals lifts, you've still got a backup seal there to stop any dust and water from getting inside the camper. Now the tropical roof on SUV campers is that little bit that you can see above the main roof of the camper there. It's made out of the same canvas as the trailer itself. So it's a 16 ounce canvas and there's no need to manually extend that pole. So the tropical roof just opens and closes with the camper trailer as normal. There's nothing more you need to do. Now all the external doors on SUV campers are flush mounted for improved weatherproofing. So that means that when it rains, 90% of the water is just going to run straight off of the side of the camper and the rubber seals inside only have to catch that 10%. One of the top features about SUV campers is the Australian design swing door and steps. Now other companies actually bolt the steps to the back of the door so the door drops down and then you walk up your steps to get inside. But with the SUVs, all you do is open your door, climb up inside and shut the door behind you. There's also a deadlock on the inside and it locks with a key as well. At the front of the tele truck, you have two four and a half kilo gas bottle holders, three 20 litre jerry can holders, the aluminium checker plated stone guard. On the as door well as directly the opposite the pantry, the camper, you'll the see the positive hitch. pressure system. So, what At this the is, it's a tele truck, you have one with a filter in it. And one so, when you're traveling along the dirt box. roads, all you do is push this button here to turn it on. It'll push positive air throughout the camper trailer so no dust gets in. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to throw back over to Joe. He's going to explain a little bit more about the suspension on the camper trailers. Off you go, Joe. Welcome to SUV Campers. Uh, today I just want to quickly go through guys and show you independent suspension on an SUV camper, how it's assembled and what goes into assembling an SUV camper. Uh, underneath, this is really important for, for the guys that want to get out in the bush and want to make it there and back without having any trouble. Um, we sort of take it to the next level, we think, when it comes to putting a suspension in the camper trail and making sure it's going to stay in there. Um, with the new suspension arms we've got out at the present time, the Series 4 suspension arms, we've got Series 3, Series 2 and the original suspension arms out there, all going gangbusters. This one here in particular is a Series 4. You can see it's all been reinforced along the sides of the suspension arms. These are all 6mm thick suspension arm box section around here. They're all 6mm wall thickness. You've got 16mm wall thickness steel 
steel collar tube on the end here, and then your nylon bushes go, your nylon six bushes go inside that again with a crush tube. So from here, once that suspension arm's actually fitted into your camper trailer like this with your coil and your shockies, everything, all your bolts, nuts are always locked tight in here. We don't leave anything to chance, so we make sure everything's locked tight on it if it's getting bolted together. From here, you've got your complete hub and stub assembly, which is this. That's your bolt-on stub that's actually fitted inside your hub and your brake assembly. Every camper trailer that SUV camper trailer puts out at the present time has the option to carry a spare stub, uh, and which is one of these. This can be carried uh, on your camper trailer. We've actually got a space on every trailer now that you can actually bolt this on with a spare set of bolts. So if you ever did get into trouble and something drastically went wrong, you hit a culvert or you hit a cliff or whatever, um, and you did do some damage to your suspension. One of the main key points that you don't want happening is your stub breaking off here, which I've, I've never seen one of these break off, but it can possibly happen, uh, or you damage this thread. So once you damage that thread, if you're in the middle of the sticks and you have got nothing to fix that, um, this is where your spare stub comes into handy. So you've got the ability to carry one of these on board if you're going up to the top where there's no services available uh, to get yourself out of trouble. Uh, it's definitely a good piece of gear to have on board, uh, but you can see with the amount of work we put into our camper trailers and, and what we do here, we don't take chances with this sort of gear. Uh, once they bolt that stub onto there, uh, it's wheel aligned. But again, everything's Loctited. Uh, your wheel nuts are torqued to the right correct pressures to pull the trailer. Uh, and basically from there, you're ready to go. But um, with SUV campers, we don't leave it the chance. That was awesome. Thanks so much, Joe. Now, SUV campers pride themselves on using what's called a true tear weight system. Now, that means that when we take our camper trailers over the Weybridge, we make sure that the mattresses are in them, the couches, all the annexes, walls, uh, poles, everything like that is in it. So we can give you the most accurate tear weight possible. Alrighty guys, so this is your pantry. Now before I go into too much detail about all of this, I wanna show you the support legs. Now these actually magnetically attach to the front box here. So you can see magnetically attaches. So all you do, pull them down, onto the ground and then adjust them to the height you need them to go to. Now the support legs are designed to support the weight of anything that's in the pantry. They're also going to stabilize it so if you lean on it or anything like that it's not going to drop because you've got those legs there holding it. In place you've also got this little latch here just behind your pantry. Now what that does is it actually locks your pantry in place. So if someone was to lean on your pantry it won't slide back in or if you're parked on a bit of a hill anything like that it'll stop the pantry from sliding back inside the compartment. Alright, let's get into the storage on this thing. Now the first thing you've got is this box here. Now it folds up and over like that so you can use it for storage of your bulkier items like tins of spaghetti, taller items. You have one small compartment here and then down the back here you have a compartment that's actually quite deep so you can put your frying pans and stuff like that in there. You also have this bench space here as well so it does create a little bit of extra bench space. In the front here you also have a little drawer so you can pull that out and you can store some stuff in there as well. Next to that you have these three carpeted drawers, so they just pull out. You can store whatever you want to in those, but they are carpeted, so you can put things like plates and cups in there if you don't have anywhere else to store them. At the back here you have the capacity to put up to a 95 litre Evercool fridge freezer, which is what we've got in here at the moment, and you can purchase them as an additional extra if you wanted now, to. Now this is that bench and I was around talking the other about. Side, you can when see you we've pack got your the pantry away, bench all you do well. is so you can use that for prepping, placing, and there's these little over uh, or eating one of these and one at the far end, and you just lock them in and slide it away. Moving on to the kitchen now and I'll start by showing you this extended bench space. Now the extended bench space is perfect for plating, prepping, uh, just giving yourself a little bit of extra space to get your stuff done when you're cooking. You've got a four burner gas stove here, all AGA approved. Directly below that, fully lined cutlery drawer so you can keep that stocked at all times with your knives, forks, everything like that. 
You've got your stainless steel dish rack as well. So once you've done your dishes, you can put them up there to dry. Sink and sink access underneath here so you can store your hoses right, and stuff so I'm going like to bring that. you in for a bit of a now, closer look at the storage is, is hot and cold water and, and you can well. see we've so got these foam water covers system over the burner it's just a bit you of protection for so them you get hot and cold every burner water also has its own automatic ignition now the way to ignite it you just pick the burner that you want to use you just push down you'll hear the click 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 just like a gas stove at home give it a quarter of a turn anti-clockwise and that will ignite your flame now that is the highest point of the flame so if you want a low flame just keep turning anti-clockwise till you get the flame that you want same thing if you want to go higher just turn clockwise until you get to where you want it to go now every burner also has a flame safe on it so what the flame safe does is it protects you if the flame gets blown out for any reason once you're done cooking though just give it a quarter of a turn uh, clockwise and that will turn the flame off now you can see it is quite a big stove and the reason we do that is because we want you to be able to cook pretty much anything when you go away camping. Now one of the best things about camping is going fishing, going crabbing, everything like that. So we put the big stove in there so that if you do go crabbing and you want to boil those crabs up for dinner, you can put your pot on, you can boil your water nice and easily, put your crabs in and have your delicious seafood Good dinner. Campers. Today we're just going to give you a bit of a run through on this fantastic new air annex and uh, how to set it up and how to put it on. So the air annex comes in two bags. The first bag has the whole air annex assembly and the second bag has all the side wall pieces, draft skirt, flooring, touring awning that goes on that lower flap and it's even got a manual hand pump for the kids. In today's lesson we are going to be using the electric pump. Plug it in, push a button, away you go. So setting up the air annex, best thing is just lay it out on the ground first so it's flat and you know you've got it on the right way. And then all it does is the zip and velcro attaches this end first. So once you've attached the zip and it's just a matter of pulling this cord and the zip and the velcro attach. Drop the centre pole down here so you can each it reach a lot easier and then up over the apex and then just tie it off on this very end. Okay so from here once you've got it zipped on just make sure you've got your valve stem screwed in and, and firm, undo the outer cap and that's where your electric pump plugs into. They plug it into there and then make sure your dial is on 7 psi on the pump and it's on the red outlet which is pump and plugged into the Anderson plug on the drawbar, push the on button and uh, stand back and watch you do its magic. That is what I call camping. So once it starts getting a little bit of structure to it, all I do is pop it up in semi-right position then it's not kinked and the posts will go up easier, making sure again that you've got all your valves closed across the front and then sit there and watch it go up and uh, get back to your beer. So as long as you've got that set on 7 psi on the gauge it will automatically stop once these are fully inflated and 7 psi is uh, pretty tight and it's not going to move around. Once you've got that set up and the pump stops then you just walk back in and pop up the center roof piece. So 
So once you've pegged down the front pods so they don't creep out, you can put up all the sidewall pieces if you like. So that's the other bag. So each individual one has its own sidewall piece. There's another one that goes here. Then you've got a draft skirt and then also a flooring sheet. So you can totally enclose it for those wet weekends away. Hi, it's Jeff from SUV Camper Trailers here. Just showing you the new air shower tent and how it connects. So just simply zips across the back section here and connects to the Velcro. And then these are your air pods that you are going to fill up with through the air intake. So your 12 volt air annex pump that connects to your shower, plug it into your Anderson plug, 7 psi on your pump, plug it into one of the intake ports and then hit start. That's it. So hints and tips for the new air shower tent, make sure that you've got both your valves closed so you don't leak any air. If one of the pods is not going up effectively, make sure that you've got your interconnecting valves open so it can run air from this pod into that pod. Anchor down the, the base of your shower tent so it doesn't move around and also make sure you've got your window up. So inside you can see we've got a queen size inner spring mattress. It has got those straps over the bed so that you can make the bed and not have to unmake it every time you go to pack the camper up. You've got two LED dimmers over the bed as well. We've got two over the couch here as well. Now they are controlled by the little dimmer switch which is the white box you can see at the bottom of the screen. And to turn it up, all you do is go up and you see they can get quite bright then back down again. You can actually turn them off from here and then back on again. Inside you've got these two internal storage drawers so they just come out like that and you can use that for clothes and towels and things like that. Alrighty guys, I want to show you one of the coolest parts about SUV campers and that is the reverse cycle air conditioning. Now reverse cycle air conditioning is an option on every single one of the SUV campers. Now you can see you've got three aircon vents here, so you've got one back here and then you've got two and three. Now these hoses are completely adjustable so you can just pull them out and point them in whatever direction you want them to go. So you can point them at the bed, up under the covers, you can point them at the couch if you're just sitting there relaxing, or if it's a hot day and you've just finished setting up, you can even come in and just point it straight at your face. Like it's that easy. Now the best part about it is it's reverse cycle. So it is- Now this is your luxury vinyl club lounge seating that actually converts down to a bed. Uh, the next part of this video is going to show you exactly how that's done, so stay tuned going to do today is we're going to turn this luxury club lounge into a double bed. Now the way you do that is by using the couch backs here. So all you do is you stand up, grab your couch back like so, lay it across the middle here and repeat. So you move your corner piece, grab your back cushion, and lay it in the middle here. And last but not least, you grab this one near the side door here. Lay it across the middle. And that's it, that's all it takes, guys. Now you're probably wondering what supports the weight when you're sleeping on this bed, and the answer lies in these cushions themselves. They have a board that runs through the middle of them that supports the weight of anyone that sleeps on it. Now, the roofs on SUV campers are quite high. This is to allow the hot air to escape easier. I personally am a little bit over five foot nine and I can only just touch the roof of the camper on my tippy toes. So that just shows you how high the roofs actually are. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about the SUV range, head to www.suvcampers.com.au or call 1300 788 222 to find your nearest SUV dealer. Don't forget to ask them about the incredible specials we've got running at the moment, but otherwise I'll see you in the next video.